Good morning. Welcome to worship at West Missionary Church. We're delighted that you're here this morning. Uh, for those who are joining us online, we're also glad to have you with us. And uh, we trust that you also will have a blessed time worshiping the Lord this morning. Well, I see some people remember to turn their clocks ahead. Uh, this Sunday and this Sunday only, uh, you, you will be excused if you yawn. We actually only encourage you to put your hand in front of your mouth when you do so. Ask me later what I refrain from saying. Um, also, this Sunday and this Sunday only, uh, you will be excused if you just doze off for a little bit. Just don't snore. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're delighted that you're here. And, and uh, they, they changed the clock back there. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't, um, so I'd have a little extra time. But uh, this morning, we have moved to a new time. And in this new time, we look forward to spring. This is kind of one of the passages that moves us towards spring. And uh, I trust that uh, God will bless us during this spring season. I have a few announcements. It's a very busy time in the life of West Missionary Church. And so I'd just like to mention some things. On March 27th, we're going to be having a taste test dinner. Everyone should choose one of the recipes that you are contributing to the new cookbook. Make it, bring it to dinner for others to taste. It's a great way to find out which new recipes in the cookbook that you want to fix for your family. And it's also a great way to uh, let people know that they really want to buy uh, one of these cookbooks. Emily was up here a couple uh, weeks ago and she said something to the effect of, uh, she'll know if you really don't like her if you don't turn in your recipes uh, in the next couple weeks. Well, this morning she told me that it's okay for, for me to tell you, you must not like her because she's not getting as many recipes as she would like. So if you've got those and you've just forgotten to turn them in, we would encourage you to do so. Uh, the, cutoff, uh, the cutoff date is next Sunday. So make sure you get those in. If you want to order a book, you can also do that at a table in the North Foyer. A few other things. There'll be a trivia night fundraiser on Saturday evening, April 9th, for our trivia night fundraiser. This is uh, for our Dominican Republic missions trip. So if you're one of those people that really enjoys trivia, this night is for you. Um, I assume that it is 7 o'clock. Okay, we'll assume it's 7 o'clock unless we hear differently. Joy Fellowship is about to start on April 14th. Uh, if you're 55 years of age or older, uh, this is for you. Our missions trip to the Dominican Republic is uh, well on its way to planning. The, your registrations and your, uh, the, the money that goes with that is to be turned in today, okay? Um, I know sometimes we forget and we push that back a little bit, but there, it's due today. If you have any questions, uh, see Pastor Josh. If you want to give to the Dominican Republic trip, uh, you can mark it on your tithing in envelope. If you are going to uh, turn in your, your money for the trip, you can make the checks out to West Missionary Church. On April 2nd, uh, we are planning a marriage retreat. It's a one-day marriage retreat from 9 o'clock a.m. It's on a Saturday, 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And uh, we look forward to a great time uh, together. It's uh, the theme of the marriage retreat is hit the reset button. Uh, sometimes we get going on in our marriage and we fall into some very negative patterns. And uh, when, when we do that, it's good to, to kind of have a little bit of preventive maintenance or if we're farther into it, 
uh, to, to just step back a little bit and, and look at some of those things. Uh, and sometimes we need to hit that reset button and say, okay, we're going to change that. Um, it's not just for people who have marriages who are in trouble. It's, uh, it's, an, it's a retreat to encourage you in your marriage and encourage you uh, with your walk with the Lord. So we encourage you to sign up for that. There's, there's registration and sign up uh, sheets at the Welcome Center. Uh, we encourage you to take a look at that. And uh, those registrations are due by March 27th. We're really looking forward to this service. I've been looking forward to it for quite some time. Uh, it's a baptism service. Uh, the form is a little bit different perhaps, but uh, the purpose is the same, to worship the Almighty, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. And may we keep that in mind and keep that as our focus uh, throughout this service. And may the Lord bless us as we spend this time together in his presence. Let's pray to prepare our hearts to worship. Heavenly Father, you've been so good to us, and we thank you. We praise your name for providing for us. We pray, praise your name for protecting us, for leading us. We praise you for the opportunity that we have to be here this morning. And Lord, we ask that as we spend this time together with you, that you might speak to our hearts Lord, we pray that you might encourage us. And Lord, that you might continue to reassure us of your, your love and your presence. Lord, bless us now as we lift our voices to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand as we sing, This is Amazing Grace.
be seated. This morning, the ladies' trio will be coming and presenting us with special music. greater than our sin.
This morning, I'd like to encourage you to open your Bibles to Romans chapter 6. And uh, we're going to look at the first 14 verses. I will get to that in uh, just a few, few minutes. This morning, uh, I want us to continue to remember uh, our brothers and sisters around the world whose situations, is, whose situations are uh, much more difficult than ours here today. Uh, I'd like to just pause and pray for the Christians in, in Ukraine and those in Myanmar and other places around the world where people are suffering because of their faith. Christ suffered for us and uh, many times his people who follow him suffer for his name's sake. Let's just pause for a moment and pray for them. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we think of those around the world who are suffering for your name and we think of, of the blessing you've given to us that we can worship freely. And as it's cold outside, but it's warm in here. And the, the ground is hard, but our pews are soft. Lord, we pray that we might be strong in our faith and strong in our support of our brothers and sisters around the world. We pray that you might uh, watch over them, give them the measure of protection that you have planned for them. And Lord, we pray that their faith might be a shining light. And now, Lord, we pray that you might guide us as we look into your call upon our lives, not only to escape the horrors of hell, but also to live the life that you've called us to live. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Not to be terribly nosy this morning, but how many of you took a shower or bath last night or this morning before coming to church? I don't expect hands necessarily to go up. <laughs> um, why did you do it? <laughs> There's an honest man. <laughs> We want to be clean, don't we? Most people in our community like to be physically clean. We tend to feel better when we are clean. We, we, we think we look better when we are clean. We even smell better when we are clean. Other people appreciate us more when we are clean. And good hygiene is good for our health. <clears throat> we also need to maintain our spiritual cleanliness. If someone were to ask if you bathed or showered this morning, you'd probably answer. You would never answer. Of course not. I took a bath in 2012. I won't need another one until 2032. Or I don't think that you would say, I took a bath last year, so I don't need to bathe already in 2022. Or even, I took a bath 10 days ago. I'm good. Perhaps we are more concerned about our physical cleanliness than about our spiritual cleanliness. How often do we take time before God to confess our sins and to ask our Heavenly Father to clean us up? We live in a dirty world. It's hard to stay clean. Physically, sometimes I think I'm a 
dirt magnet. I get cleaned up and I rub against a dirty car as I go through the garage or I pick up a greasy tool or I get sweaty or I eat pasta and I get spaghetti sauce on my clean clothes. And I'm dirty all over again. Because we live in a dirty world, we have a hard time staying clean spiritually. We come to church on Sunday and we feel close to God. We worship Him and we thank Him for His goodness. We confess our sins to God and we, we go home determined to avoid dirt from now on. But dirt is all around us. On Monday, we watch a TV show that ridicules Christ, celebrates sin, and the dirt flows right out of our TV, and sure enough, we're dirty again. We go to work, and those heathens we work with rub off, rub off on us. <laughs> <laughs> You're referring to Josh, right? <laughs> for, those, for those of you who don't know, Emily works here at the church. <laughs> oh. It's hard to soar with the eagles when you have to work with turkeys, right? <laughs> Is that what you meant? Sometimes it's just the fact that we encounter difficulty that causes us to behave badly and sure enough, we're dirty again. It's not enough to have a spiritual bath once in a decade or once a year or once a month or week. We need the cleansing of God's Word on a daily basis. We need to be in the presence of our Heavenly Father on a daily basis that's why it's so important to spend time with God each day and to spend time in His Word every single day. Sometimes that cleaning process is uncomfortable. As a little boy, I remember my mother's scrubbings were a bit painful as she tried to make sure that her little darling was squeaky clean. She wanted to make sure that I was squeaky clean, so she sometimes scrubbed until I squeaked. It's hard to stay clean in a dirty world. I don't know how many of you have dogs that are groomed. Have you ever had a dog that he groomed it and comes home and goes and rolls in the dirt? Or the day after you get him all cleaned up and looking good, he goes outside and encounters a skunk. We have to be careful. We have to be careful to stay clean. In Psalm 51, the psalmist is crying out to God after he is confronted by the prophet Nathan about his sin with Bathsheba and also his murder of Uriah. And he was exposed as being dirty, dirty with sin. 
And he cries out to God, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. He didn't cry out and say, Have mercy to me, O God, according to my deservedness, because he knew he did not deserve God's mercy. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my, father conce- my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness. Even in the womb you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Then we find something that to me is kind of interesting. He says, cleanse me. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. What in the world is hyssop? Cleanse me with hyssop. And hyssop is actually kind of like a, an evergreen plant that grew in southern Europe, the Middle East and Central Asia. It's part of the mint family. It was used for flavoring, and medicinal properties of hyssop have been known for centuries. It has a distinctive bitter taste. Apparently they are continuing to research the benefits of hyssop for medicinal purposes. There's some thought that hyssop actually destroys cancer cells. They're continuing to work on that. So why would the psalmist say, cleanse me with hyssop? He understood he needed healing, he needed spiritual healing. He needed to be cleansed of the disease of sin. And I think he also recognized that along with the cleansing, there was a bitter taste. The consequences of his sin was bitter. But David said, bring it on because I want to be clean. We are adverse to pain. We hate pain. We avoid it at all costs. But sometimes the pain helps us. Sometimes the pain helps us to remember not to disobey God. Some of us at various times have had surgeries. We wanted to be well. And so we were, we were willing to go through temporary pain in order to accomplish that. David said, cleanse me with hyssop. It is important that We stay clean. Clean before God. And the way that that happens is to spend time with Him and allow Him to cleanse us. 1 John 1 9 tells us if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He does it. He does it. I don't know about you, but there have been times where I've tried and I've tried and I've tried to do better. 
And yet, I have to keep trying because I can't do it on my own. It's important that we call upon Him and say, Father, wash me up. Scrub me between, behind the ears. Make me squeaky clean in your eyes. This morning is a baptism service. And you might notice that we're going to baptize in water. We don't baptize in mud. We don't baptize in sand. We baptize in water because water is a cleaning agent. And there is symbolism with this. And so as we go to the communion tank and we baptize, may we remember that Christ has cleansed us from all sins. And we can need to continue to come to him for cleansing because we live in a very dirty world. This morning I want to talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit about baptism and, and what it means from Romans chapter 6. Baptism does not wash away one sin. That's not what baptism is. Baptism is an outward symbol of what has happened inside. It is a cleansing that God does within us. Baptism is identification with Christ. We are identified with his death as we go down into the water. It is also an identification with his burial. And if you take a look at Romans chapter 6, we find it in verse 3, it says, or don't you know that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that something else is about to happen. Something that Jesus experienced. We want to identify also not only with his death and burial, but also with his resurrection. When we come up out of the water, it is a symbol of being raised with Christ. We also identify with Christ in his righteousness and his holiness. For we are to be dead to sin and sin no longer has control of us. Baptism is also a symbol of new life. We die to sin. We die to the old way of life. We no longer live like we used to. Jesus Christ did not go to the cross. He did not suffer and die on the cross so that we could live, continue to live in sin. It's not okay just to come to an altar of prayer and say, Oh, dear God, I want to avoid hell and I want to go to heaven. We are to live a new life. We're a new creation, creation a new creature. The old is past, the new has come. And so when we go down under the water, it's again symbolic of dying to sin. And when we come up, it's symbolic of of being raised to a new way of life. And we rise to a new way of life as we follow and we obey the scriptures. We continue to live in a dirty world. We continue to need 
the Lord's scrubbing. But we never accept it. We never accept the sin and say, I can't help it. If you say you can't help it, you can't help but sin, it's calling God a liar because he said he has given us everything we need to live a righteous and godly life. The problem is we're still human. And so when we sin, it's time to get up, say, Lord, clean me up. Even if it burns, even if it hurts, I want to be squeaky clean before you. This morning, we have four individuals who have indicated a desire to follow the Lord in water baptism. To obey the command of God to be baptized. And we're going to, we're going to ask them to, to, to come to the front here. And we baptize upon their confession of faith. And so we're going to hear a confession of faith from each one. It will be brief, but there will be a confession of faith. And we're going to ask them to come, and we're going to do that right here uh, before we go to the baptismal waters. But as they come, remember back to the time when you accepted Christ and remember the time when you also took this step of faith. Let's just join right here in the middle. And renew your commitment to be squeaky clean before God. I'm so proud of you guys. This is one of the highlights of what I do as a pastor. And I'm so proud that you've taken this step. I'm going to ask each of you a question and then you can answer it very simply with a yes or no. Okay? Brinley, have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. And do you intend to live for him for the rest of your life? Yes. Okay, thank you. And Luke, have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. And do you intend to live for him for the rest of your life? Yes. Jamie, have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. And do you intend to live for him for the rest of your life? Yes. <clears throat> and Nathan, have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. And do you intend to live for him for the rest of your life? Yes. <clears throat> Would you like to say something else? Yeah, I just thought I'd give my uh, testimony, try to do it quick. Uh, pastor always, you know, he asked me to keep it two minutes or less, so sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I grew up, my parents always had me at church every Sunday. Uh, I was sprinkled as a baby, you know, and so up until recently, you know, every time baptism was brought up, it was kind of, you know, I've always been baptized, you know, but... Uh, <clears throat> You know, and then I got saved at CDYC. I don't remember exactly what year it was. Uh, Ron Teft was the youth pastor, if I remember the name correctly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I don't know, it was about a year ago. I was listening to uh, Bot Radio on the way down to Portland. And, I mean, the whoever it was, I don't know who it was talking anymore, but it was like they were sitting in the passenger seat giving me a lecture, not uh, preaching to anybody else. And I bet if I listened to the sermon again today, 
it wouldn't be what I heard that day. Um, but, you know, and so that's when I really started thinking that, you know, I needed to get baptized and do it the way I understand Scripture to say it now is being after you're saved, not as an infant. Um, you know, and the other thing, last thing here is uh, Dr. David Jeremiah had a, ended up one of his uh, lessons with a story of a lady that she went through the receiving line after the sermon and said, Pastor, you've done the, you, you've been preaching better than you've ever been preaching before. You know, and he's like, man, that really boosted me up, but I didn't think I'd been preaching any different. And uh, then he sees her get back in the same line. He's like, man, I'm going to get this twice in one day. Started feeling really good about himself, and the lady got back up to him. And, Pastor, i got to correct myself. I've just been listening better than I've ever been listening before, <laughs> in which, you know, I think that's just my case here. So, Thank you, Nate. At West Missionary Church, we practice immersion because we believe it best symbolizes the meaning of baptism. Even the very word baptized means to dip under, to immerse. And so this morning, we're going to go to the baptismal waters and, and we're going to baptize these four individuals. And as we do, this is a time of celebration. This is a fantastic time for the West Missionary Church family. May we glorify God as these individuals have, as they are baptized. Thank you. We'll go out this way. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, oh Spirit come make us humble.
three sports. Upon your confession of faith, we baptize you with water in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jamie Gerber, upon your confession of faith, we baptize you with water in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit. 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold. fear and all anxiety to every hold held captive by depression I speak Jesus
take Luke and Brindley. Are you out there somewhere? Okay. Well, we just want to... If you are, come on up. This is above and beyond the call of duty, isn't it? To have to come up here. I would just like for you to have the opportunity to congratulate uh, those who have been baptized today. Uh, would you do so with applause? And then after the service, uh, would you come and congratulate them? Uh, especially if you are, are, you know, have any role in their lives, we'd really encourage you to do that. And uh, may the Lord bless us and may the Lord bless you. You, uh, you made an important step in your walk with God today. Okay? Will you show your appreciation? <laughs> Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for baptism and what it represents. Thank you for cleaning this up when we were filthy, dirty with sin. Lord, may we, may we allow you to keep us clean. May we obey your word and may we become more and more like Jesus every day. We ask now that you would dismiss us with your blessing and we pray that we might represent you well wherever we go. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and you are dismissed. Okay. People.